The final set of problems that McMahon deals with um, all have to do with uh, the same issue of, uh, of when we die uh, and have to do with the apparent paradoxes that result from our, our, our intuitions. Um, if we take it that the reason that someone's um, death is a, is a bad thing and the degree to which it's a bad thing does depend upon how much life they're deprived of. So that we say, as we said before, that Joe, the person who dies at 30, that, that his death is more tragic than Jerry, the, the person who dies at 112, then it would seem that our intuition is based upon the principle that a death is worse depending upon uh, either how many of the goods in the future it deprives one of, or to what extent it limits the kind of gains we can get from life, both of which are determined by how long we live, um, so that a death is more tragic uh, depending upon how early it, it occurs in a person's life. The 30-year-old's death is, generally speaking, more tragic than the person who's 112. However, as he points out, this is not always true in, in, in a very interesting way. I mean, despite the disturbing uh, nature of the hypothetical, it, it does seem to be true, and that is having to do with the death of, deaths of fetuses and infants. And we'll, let's just keep it at infants for the moment. No one would say that the death of an infant was not a tragedy. However, it does seem, and this is something you can work out for yourself, that is, you have to test your own intuitions with this regard, that the death of a 35-year-old is more tragic than the death of a newborn. Both of them tragic, but not equally tragic. And in fact, that the death of the 35-year-old or the 20-year-old or, you know, can change the dates as you wish and, and, and test your intuition, intuitions uh, on, on, on it. Uh, that the deaths of these older people is actually, uh, they're actually more tragic. And how do we account for that because it seems paradoxical because of course the newborn has more years of life ahead of them that is if they hadn't died uh, <clears throat> in their infancy they would have lived more years they had more years in the future than the person who's 35 and how do we how do we account for that how do we jive those in that intuition that the death of the 35 year old is, is, is more tragic is worse than the death of the newborn with our general belief that the the, the badness of somebody's death really is correlated to how many years of life that they're deprived of. Well, that, that's a very interesting question, and, and um, he comes up with a theory, and make of it what you will, this idea of psychological connectedness. That is, the psychological connectedness, I, I, as I take it, is the connectedness of the person who dies, and when they die, with their own future. A person of 35 has hopes, plans, desires, uh, can think about the future and is in that way psychologically connected with their future in a way that an infant obviously isn't. So the, it's not just the years of life that we take into account when we gauge the badness of someone's death. It's also the degree of psychological connectedness of the person at the time uh, with, with those those experiences that they've been deprived of, which is not to say that a newborn infant dying isn't a terrible thing. It is. But it's not as bad, he's saying, intuitively. We do not regard it as bad uh, as the death of a 35-year-old. And that, and that can be accounted for by this idea of uh, psychological connectedness. Uh, he does bring up some further uh, apparent paradoxes uh, in, in this regard. Um, you know, it, and, and it, uh, also very interesting, and, and also good for because they bring out our intuitions on the matter and what we really think about these things. Um, if we know that a, a an infant has a a condition which, if uncorrected, medical condition which, if uncorrected, will result in their immediate death, but that if we do correct it, let's say, in this hypothetical, that will mean that they are fated to die at 35. And the question is, should we correct the condition? On an intuitive level, of course we should. Of course we should. 
However, um, that does lead to a certain paradoxical result depend that, that is, conflicts with our earlier uh, results, and that is that the death of a 35-year-old is worse, uh, and worse for them than the death of an infant. If we do the procedure, we, we really fake that person to a worse death than they would have had, uh, if that makes sense. And, and I think it does. That is, that if, if, if we do the procedure, the person will die at 35. If we don't do the procedure, the person will die in infancy. We have just said before that a, an infant's death is less bad for them than a 35-year-old's death is bad for them. So what we seem to be doing is uh, consigning that person to a worse death by doing the medical procedure. Yet our intuitions tell us, of course, we would do the medical procedure. How he... Um, resolves that? Well, he says on the bottom of page 265, uh, he says, to dissolve the paradox completely, it seems that we must recognize that the comparative badness of different possible deaths does not necessarily determine which death it would be worse to suffer. That is, there needs to be a distinction between the, the badness of a death and which death it would be worse to suffer. If we take our own cases, we would say it's worse to suffer a death in infancy than at the age of 35, even though the badness of our death at 35 outweighs the badness of death at infancy. That is, sometimes it would be worse to suffer a better death, is what, and, and better not to suffer a better death. And I'm going to get a little mixed up there, but I hope that you see the point. Is that while it is usually worse for a person to suffer a worse death, the case of the fetus suggests that it can sometimes be better to suffer a worse death. Similarly, it can also be worse to have a less bad death. For example, when death becomes less bad for a person because the life that he would otherwise have had has now become less good than it might have been. Um, so, there, there, I think that that actually does work out. That is, although it may seem paradoxical that it's worse to suffer a better death and better to suffer a worse death, although maybe that, you know, may on the face of it seem self-contradictory, it makes perfect sense. That is, I, I do believe that it's worse, that the death of a 35-year-old is worse for them than the death of an infant is for them. I, I, intuitively, that seems to make sense. Um, but I also would say intuitively, if there's some way to extend a person's life beyond infancy to age 35, that we should do it. And the only way to reconcile seemingly those two different in intuitive uh, beliefs is to say that sometimes it is better for a person to suffer a worse death and worse for a person to suffer a better death.